Hi, my name is Elisa Cortez Bast, and I am so grateful to spend time with you today as Grove Reformed Church is walking through the last words of Jesus. My word is one of the very last. Jesus' statement in John 19 30, it is finished. I chose these words of Jesus, not fully recognizing the deep conviction and also the great joy that they would spark in me. As a person who prides themselves in finishing what they've started, a quick glance at this phrase made this feel like this was it, this was my phrase. It felt like enough. But as I continued to dig in, there was so much more. You know, here in Michigan, spring is finally here. And so it's like stretching out of its annual slumber it reminds me of a cat coming out of a really satisfying nap. And simultaneously, we had these accelerations in medicine and, and care that's becoming more available. And you can feel like this growing sense of optimism and, and rest from an extensive period of just extreme uncertainty. And I know for some, it's been very chaotic, um, just in a lot of loss. And so it finally feels like we may be at the end of like a very long winter. This reminds me of Narnia, all winter, no Christmas. And so the ice and snow are ending. Um, spring reminds us to hope. And so um, in the middle of this, I've just been reflecting that where there's been a lot of challenges over the last year, um, there's been some opportunities that have been provided to me. Um, I feel like the one thing that I was always missing in my life was time. And now here I had this small window of time without my commute. And so even though my schedule was no less busy, um, I just meant that I could have a little bit more time at home. Now, uh, for anybody who has been in their home or their place of dwelling for a long time, you know, um, probably similar to me, your home was speckled with, um, with projects and supplies still wrapped in their own cellophane saying, I'll get to it when I have time. And for the first time, I finally had time to paint that last coat of paint, um, to twist that last screw, to actually hang the thing on the wall, organize the last detail, I finally got to finish. So I think of all the finished things in my own moment, and then also in this Lent season, I'm thinking of the finish statement in John 19. Because of the placement of this final phrase um, of Jesus in the story of crucifixion, it may feel like a very formal and proper statement. It is finished. Um, but what it's actually saying, teleo, the word that is expressed here, the tetelestai in verse 30 feels like either like an exhausted last gap, like, oh, it's finally finished, or it could be a triumphant declaration as we imagine what that moment must have felt like. But what I think is important to know is that this phrase, this teleo phrase, um, it was a common phrase. It was an everyday phrase uh, for the people in Jesus' time. So Bible commentators will tell us that um, men and women of Jesus' time would have used this term in the same way that I thought about my own projects. Done with an errand, it is finished. Uh, took that last bite of ice cream, it's finished. Um, Taleo just signifies that a task has been completed. But it also meant so much more. When Jesus calls out his Taleo, it's with intention. It is an extremely intentional usage because Taleo has other usages that are important to us as we dig into this last word of Jesus. The phrase also means complete, as in the work is complete. The idea of Taleo is that something that was started is finished, it is now complete, and is complete forever. So it's this idea of something that, that has happened, is happening, and will always happen in the future. And so as I think about that, the plan of redemption that was instigated way back in Genesis at our fall is now completed, but it also stands forever. Jesus has completed his mission. He's walked blameless on the earth, and now he's taking on our sin and shame and our humanity to tear down the wall between us and God. So for me, this is like watching a chef that plants seeds. Um, as we think about like farm to table, they're patiently watering them. They're nurturing them to grow. And then as they grow, they're, they're cutting the vegetables and the herbs. They're lovingly preparing them. She's crafting a dish over heat and fire. It is flavored and full. And setting the dish down, she may say, it is finished. And so friends, as we think about that, we'd say, oh, well, she started the meal an hour ago. And that's not so. She thought of the meal the minute she planted the seeds for the herbs. So in the same way, God saw us at the very beginning, before we ever fully understood the gift of forgiveness or understood grace, that we even understood it was for us at the table of communion, that we were being pursued and we are being loved by an incredible, an incredible God. A plan was already in motion. This is Taleo. 
Now imagine even further that the meal never runs out, like there is enough for everyone forever. This is the goodness, the fullness of Taleo. It is completed forever. There's nothing more you can do to earn it. There's nothing more I can do to earn it. Nothing we actually need to contribute to make it happen. This is not a potluck. It has already been taken care of. It was made complete. Now, this is incredibly good news. I mean, particularly for those of us who are doers, the list makers, the activators, the mobilizers, because on our best days, we are no more deserving or earning of our place at the table. It is finished. This is incredibly good news, particularly for those of us who are the exhausted, the irritable, the frustrated, the people who blow it, because on our worst days, we are no less deserving, nor can we lose our place at the table because it's finished. Now, you see, the last part of Taleo is that our debt is paid in full. Contemporaries of Jesus would have also marveled at Christ spending his, his precious last little breath on exclaiming that the debt was complete. Why waste your last breath on such a phrase? And see, in that moment, I think, what a loving Jesus. He let the entire world know with, with the precious commodity of his last breaths from then to eternity that it, in that moment, the debt had been paid in full, that the price of our sinfulness, our disobedience, our selfishness had wreaked havoc on the world. We deserved the brokenness we had created and would create. We blew it. And as people who will continue to blow it until the day we die, we would always owe could you imagine an enormous debt that it just kept accruing interest, that you kept adding to the ledger with no hopes of ever paying it off? And imagine that enormous debt would disqualify you from ever experiencing true life. Yet in that moment, nestled in John 19, Jesus said, I did it. I paid it. It's done. You could have never repaid it. You will always mess up. You'll always come up short. But because I love you and I want to be in relationship with you, I am covering the debt for you and everyone coming after you and for every day that you feel not good enough and for every day even when you feel good enough. Our debt has been paid. It is finished. Now, I encourage you in this season to just dwell in the teleo where do you need to hold and hear the goodness of God that says, come close, I'm near? Are there places where you're still trying to earn enough brownie points to feel like you're good enough to be at the table, that you deserve to be here, that you deserve to have a space to serve and, and to be known in the kingdom of God? Are there places where you need to extend forgiveness, maybe even seek forgiveness of others? Or are there places where you just still feel like you need to catch up, do more good works? Pay off the debt that's already been paid. Are you trying to finish something that's already over? Where do you need to slow down and just experience the complete work of God's amazing love for you? When I reread John 19.30, I don't speed through anymore because when I hear it is finished, I hear Jesus saying to my heart, I have loved you, I do love you, and I love you forever. Because yes, Jesus loves you and me. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great Sun, moon, and 
stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see, all I have needed, thy hand hath provided, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me, pardon for sin, and a peace that endureth thy own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings all mine with ten thousand besides Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. to